Okay, so we are going to talk about writing an appointment. So in this case, you don't know that any of these three are a vertex. None of these are x-intercepts. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to create three new equations by taking our three x and y values and plugging each one into standard form of a parabola. Okay, so remember standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So I'm going to take each of my three points and I'm going to create a new equation for each of the three by plugging in its x and y. I'll give you guys a second and then I'll show you over on the side. Let's stick with this blue color. Okay, so if you take a look over here, here's my three random points. I have no idea if anyone's the vertex. I know none of them are x-intercepts because I don't have y's that are zero. So here's what I want you to do. You're going to take y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and I'm going to plug in x and y for each one. So for example, this first one's going to look like this. Y is 4, and that's going to equal, I don't know what A is, but I do know what X is. X is 1, so I plug in 1. I don't know what B is. I do know what X is, so I plug in 1 again for X, and I don't know what C is. Do you see how I did that? I plugged in the X and the Y into the standard form equation. I'm going to simplify it in a minute, but for now, let's just plug in the 3, and then we'll worry about that in a minute. Okay, so I'm actually going to move our directions out of the way so we can zoom in on this, because we won't get to step 2 for a minute or so now. All right, so now let's try with the second point. What goes in for y? Negative 8 equals, I still don't know what a is, but this time x is negative 2. So I do negative 2 squared. I don't know what b is, but x is still negative 2 plus c. Do you see that? Okay, try it for the third point on your own. When you're done, take a look up at mine and let's see if we wrote the same thing down. Okay, did we match? All right, now all I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna simplify each of these equations, okay? So, let's look over here. I'm still gonna have four equals, but now I have a times one squared. Well, what's one squared? Just one, so this is now just four equals a. b times one is just b plus c. So if I just simplify what I have there, that looks like a much simpler equation that I produced, right? It's the same one, I just simplified the pieces. So I'm going to do the same thing with my second one. So that one's now going to be negative 8 equals, what would this chunk turn into? 4a, right? Because negative 2 squared is a positive 4, so that's really 4a. Now I really have a minus 2b, right? minus 2b, and then plus c. All right, so you try and simplify the last one. When you're done, look up at mine, and let's see if we match. How'd you do? They match? Yeah? Okay. Guess what? You now know what to do, believe it or not. Don't you have three variables and three equations? Do you remember solving systems with three variables? Yes. <laughs> We're going to go through it. But that's literally step two. You have three equations and three variables, so you're going to solve the system. 
okay? We do have a separate video just on solving systems. So the only new piece here is that you had to come up with those equations. But it's really not so bad if you just take that um, standard form and you plug in the x and y. That's where your three equations come from, okay? So now we're going to figure out what a, b, and c are just like we did a chapter ago, okay? So let's go back to our three. All right, so the first step was to take, I'm actually going to number these three so we know which ones we're talking about. So I'm just going to call this my first equation, my second equation, my third equation. The first thing I want to do is cancel any of the variables out. So I want a pair of oppos opposites between any of the two. It doesn't matter which two. So what do you guys want to pick? And who do you want to cancel out? What'd you say? One and two, and you want to cancel out? The B's? Sure. So I can cancel out the B's by multiplying number one by positive two, correct? So I'm going to write down, oh, sorry. I'm going to do equation number one times two, and I'm going to join that with equation two. All right? So let's do that. Equation number one times two. Let me zoom out a little bit. Number one times two would get me eight equals 2a plus 2b plus 2c, and we'll join that with equation 2 as it is, negative 8, 4a minus 2b plus c. Okay, so remember we added these together. I get a 0, 6a, the b's are gone, plus 3c. Don't get nervous that you got a zero over here. So what? Zero is a number like anybody else. All right. So once you combine your first two, I would star that equation so we can come back to it easily later on. Because now we have to go back to our three equations. We have to use the one that we haven't used yet, which in this case would be three. And we have to cancel out the same variable. It doesn't matter which other one you match it with, but you have to cancel out B again. So I'm going to have to use equation 3, and then it looks like what would be my easiest way to cancel out this B? Multiply equation 1 by, by negative 3, right? Because I need to cancel out with positive 3B. So I'm going to take equation number 1. Let's see if I can, maybe I can squeeze it in right here. I'm going to do equation number one and I'm going to multiply it we said by a negative three and then I can leave equation three all as it was okay so let's do that equation one times negative three Okay, now I have my two, and I'm going to add these together like I normally do. So that's going to get me a 20. 6a, b's are gone, minus 2c. You can star that equation. Do you remember what the next step was? Right, now your two starred equations should be, now you're down to two equations with two variables. You can solve these all day long, right? You guys are awesome at these. So I have this, I have this. I'm pretty close to having a pair of opposites. All I would have to do is... Yeah, one of them just needs to be multiplied by negative one, and then my uh, a's will cancel out. So maybe I'll take this guy and multiply him by a negative one. It really doesn't matter which one. So zero times negative one, that doesn't change. But now I have a minus 6a minus 3c, and I'll join that th with this one over here. Oh, thank you. A's are gone. I got a minus 5c. So now I know what c is. I have one third of the answers that I was looking for. And I'm really close to getting the next one. I now know one of my three variables. I needed A, B, and C. I already have C. How do I find the next one? 
great. Go back to either one of your start equations. It doesn't even matter. I'll pick this one, oops, because the numbers are smaller. Plug in negative four there, and now I can solve for a. So um, let's see, I'll just do that over here. Did you get two for A? And now we're so close. All I have to do now is. Right, now you're going to go back to your original three. Pick any one of the three that you want and plug in the two variables that you have and you can solve for the last one. We might as well pick the very top one, right? That one was easy. Four equals A plus B plus C. So four equals A plus B plus C. And now I can just solve for B. So if I write this all nice and neatly, actually I'll switch to pink, A is 2, B is 6, and C is negative 4. You are pretty much done now. All you have to do is pop that back into standard form to actually create the equation. So I'm going to move over to our directions. Step 3, once you have the values for A, B, and C, you're going to plug them in, plug in A, plug in B, plug in C and you'll be done. Okay, so for us, that's going to look like this. Y equals A was 2, B was 6, and C is a negative 4. And you have just created the equation of the parabola that hits the three points that you were given.